wondering, certainly GMs are, <laughs> they are up late at night thinking about who is going to be our quarterback and the upcoming season. And you can put Denver, Pittsburgh with the retirement of Big Ben and Carolina Panthers with this, the atrocious Sam Darnold. The, the, those teams are staying up real late right now, figuring out, man, who is going to be their head person coming up in the upcoming season. Yeah, and again, so much of of where who's going to be leading these teams, it's it's a domino effect. It's we're waiting to see what's going on with Russell Wilson. We're waiting to see what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. When see if Tom Brady decides that he feels like playing in San Francisco. I mean, there's a <laughs> lot of dominoes that have to fall. Uh, I feel bad for the NFL teams that are looking for quarterbacks in the draft because I don't love this draft. Uh, you know, and I think it's exemplified by the fact that the top quarterback has moved around a lot early in the season. It was Matt Corral or Sam Howell. Those guys have fallen off. Then Malik Willis out of Liberty got a lot of push. And then, you know, he sort of fell down the board. Now I think consensus it's Kenny Pickett. I'm not a big Kenny Pickett fan. I've, I mean, I know you watch a lot of AC football. He's a guy sure. who I've seen him play a lot. I've seen a lot of these guys play live, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, Pickett's a nice player. I know people can talk about hand size all they want. I just, uh, that, that stuff doesn't bother me, but I, when I just watch him play, I don't see him, as a difference he's maker, a, he's a Derek Carr, uh, you know, Daniel Jones, Mitch yeah. Trubisky kind of guy. He's he's fine. I I don't think anybody. Or it could be Tom Brady. Like you, or it could that's be. that's the thing is like you you really don't know, right? I mean, and that's just rolling the dice. I mean, we got a list of like maybe five good quarterbacks coming out of the draft, and like it's likely that four of the five, or maybe all five, will just be bust. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you're probably looking. I mean, Malik Willis and Desmond Ritter probably have the highest ceiling of you know these guys are athletic quarterbacks who can go out and make plays with their legs. You know, everybody's talking about you know Desmond Ritter is kind of that Kyler Murray build. He's a little he's of course bigger than Baby Yoda, but you know he wants to use his leg. Willis is, has a big arm, can has a lot of mobility, um, but. I, there's just questions of can they make it at the next level? And I, I, I was talking with somebody about this, and I, I don't remember who, but, you know, you look at quarterbacks in the NFL, and I want to know if you agree with me or not. You know, all you can talk all about what college they go to and who they had coaching them, but to me, quarterbacks are more determined by where they get drafted and how they develop in those first couple of years after college, more so than any other position. Cause I feel like wide receivers come dime a dozen from college and step in right away and make plays, but sure. quarterbacks need that environment to, to sort of foster them. Well, you're, you're playing entirely different defenses and exotic blitz packages. Yeah. And, and to be honest, like, you, you know, you're playing at the college level. There might be one or two players on the other side uh, that could chase you down. Uh, in this league, you got guys that are 300 pounds and played nose tackle that can chase you down if you try to get outside the pocket. I, I, it might be the year of the free agent. And I mean, when I was looking at the free agent list, I wasn't excited about that either. You know, Andy Dolan, Cam Newton, Tyrod Taylor, Jameis Winston, T Teddy Bridgewater, Marcus Mariota. I mean, you know, these kind of names that I mentioned now, I, I talked about Mitch Trubisky earlier. It's like when those are like your top five to 10 quarterback options for some of these teams like Denver, Pittsburgh, Carolina, Washington, who are now the commanders. I don't know if I can ever figure that out. Uh, I'm calling them for the Detroit. team from here on out. It's fine. And now Tampa Bay. I mean, Tampa Bay uh, needs a quarterback. And I guess we go back to the topic that we had last week of like, okay, well, where's Russell Wilson going to go? Where's Aaron Rodgers going to go? Is Tom Brady going to come back and play just based on need, right? I mean, it might be like a week four thing where Tom Brady's like, all right, sure, you know, come back and throw it around a little bit. But I think it's it's clear to say that, you know, you talk about Kenny Pickett, Willis. Uh, if I'm more on the dice on anybody, it might be Sam Howell. Sure. Sure. I mean, I, well, I mean. Just because he's, he, he's got some mobility and he's just like, He's a finisher. He wins games like he's got that like tough person mentality. But look how good, you know, when you talk about quarterbacks jumping right in. Right. Justin Fields struggled and certainly he didn't start this, this season. And then, uh, you know, Trevor Lawrence, who I think is one of the best quarterbacks to ever come out of college football. It's tough, like just jumping right in, especially when you're probably going to get if you're a good quarterback, you're going to get drafted by a bad team, even though Mel Kuyper doesn't see Kenny Pickett coming off the board until, uh, you know, number 11 or so. If, if Washington decides to take a quarterback, 
uh, in that first round. If they don't, he could drop even further than that. That should tell you how weak this quarterback class is. Yeah, the other interesting thing is, you know, there are a lot of quarterbacks out there that might be available by trade outside the big names. Carson Wentz in Indianapolis, Sam Darnold we talked about. If somebody feels like taking a shot on him. The name that I don't hear a lot of people talking about is Jimmy Garoppolo. And if you're not going to be playing for the big name quarterbacks, if you're not looking into the draft, listen, he got that shoulder fix. And this is a guy who has won a lot of games in a in a tough division he's gone out there he's led teams to the playoffs listen i know he's not the flashiest i know he gets that game manager moniker and i know he's not gonna win you a game right but you're just hoping he doesn't lose it for you but if you're a team like i mean again i'm a fan of a team like cleveland who is not looking for that kind of quarterback you have a nick chubb and a cream hunt that you're gonna build an offense around you're looking for somebody who's not gonna turn the ball over jimmy garoppolo with a winning pedigree he can fit in a lot of these teams that already have some weapons around him he's probably not great for a team like i don't know jacksonville was looking for a team with no weapons like you're not looking for that but for some of these mid-tier teams you know he would be a great fit by the way i know denver wants aaron Rodgers, but he'd be a great fit in denver because you got a good running game you got Cortland sutton out there you got tim Patrick, I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo might be that little diamond in the rough out of all these quarterbacks. Yeah, the Broncos said they're going all in. Like, they're like, we're not having another season here in Denver without some sort of, you know, serviceable quarterback at least. And I think that's why you're seeing, you know, like Kyler Murray and the Cardinals, like, what they're like, doing? dude, we, we got to fix this. Because, <laughs> like, it, look at the rest of the league. It looks really bad for, uh, you know, not a half of it, but a third of the league looked really bad at the quarterback position, uh, especially as needs go. And, you know, come on, don't, don't be that guy. I think we've seen uh, when you fall out of favor with a team, it's really hard to get on with another team and another community and all that. And, and certainly they got the pieces there in Arizona to be successful, uh, which is crazy that that's turned into the division in football yeah. uh, when it was the NFC East for so long. But uh you know, and when the NFC West, remember, was so bad for so long. I remember the NFC West put nine and seven teams and eight and eight teams in the playoffs. <laughs> hey, it flips, man. You know, just like uh, just like you know, the Western Eastern Conference of basketball and NFC and AFC. Uh, right now, all the talent is out there in the West, at least for now. We'll see where Russell Wilson goes. Uh, we'll see where Aaron Rodgers goes. We'll see if Aaron Donald continues to play uh, out there, if he is taking the Super Bowl ring and calling it a career. Uh, we'll continue to move through this NFL draft. Uh, I think we both agree these qu- the quarterback's not the answer, uh, but it's going to get real interesting when we start to talk about pass rushers and we talk about some of these skill position players out there. There is a lot of skill positions and a lot of yeah. impact players to be had. It's just not at the quarterback position. No. All right. Well, uh, you know, we had a bunch of topics to get into, but we run out of time again. I, let's save the Art Briles talk for next week. Uh, certainly, that is uh, something that needs to be more unpacked than a minute or two. Uh, as what a roller coaster that has been. But it's kind of wetted our whistle to get ready for some college football, some NFL. Uh, we know we're going to blink, Nick, and it's going to be right around the corner. Cannot wait to see what happens this weekend in the world of sports. It's yeah, it's the best. It's the best time as we get towards March. Uh, this is the peak to be a sports fan with all that goes on. So uh, it's only going to get better from here. Appreciate everyone watching. If you're listening out there, we are on YouTube and you can find us on all the social medias at Scott Cole show at Nick Mazesco. And of course, we appreciate you listening out there on where you are, when, where your podcast can be found as we continue to bring you. Well, our crazy thoughts and, and topics throughout this Really slow week of sports, and we're hopefully it picks up in the following week. And, of course, our thoughts out there with the folks uh, in Ukraine with everything going on that certainly takes any precedence over the world of sports. Be safe, and we hope we can find some peace here over these next couple of weeks.